Global Press On. Um, yeah, David Scott, we're going to start. David's going to say a few words about um, the new safety initiative that, that Duke are uh, introducing for boxing, which is a, a really great thing for the sport in this country. Um, and then after that, we'll have questions from the floor for David and for Junior, who's just returned from America, where he's been sparring with Deontay Wilder, helping him sharpen up, sharp up for one of the biggest fights of the year. So, um, and obviously, Junior will be defending his. WBO Oriental Belt um, against Rogelio Omar Rossi on December 15th in Christchurch is the main undercard fight. So without further ado, David. Hey, uh, welcome everyone. And um, look, first of all, thank you very much for being patient. You know, family, traffic, etc. So you've all been lovely and I want to acknowledge that. Um, so, you know, now we all go. Um, we're here today to talk about, well, we're about three weeks away from Joseph Parker's critical comeback fight against Alexander Flores, Christchurch, December 15. That's kind of the home straight. Both guys, I'm told, are in tip-top shape. And for Joseph, it really is potentially career-ending, and he'd have to consider his options if he were to lose that fight. So his most important fight to date, three weeks away. Um, safety has been a very topical issue lately. And it's kind of a topic that in boxing people don't really want to talk about. Um, there's been some recent tragic events and you'd have to have a heart of stone not to care or feel for the, the people affected and involved by that. Um, Duco, our organisation, has probably promoted more boxing shows than anyone else in New Zealand. Um, and, uh, you know, some people like to hate us and some people like us and some people know us and some people don't. Um, but I think for the first time I'd like to uh, let you know that we've always taken safety incredibly seriously. I'd go as far as to say we'd be up there with international best practice, if not, and certainly the best in New Zealand. And as an example, I brought some props. This is our Duco Health and Safety Management Plan. Um, that's a you know a working document over the years that changes over time. Every boxing event itself has a operations health and safety plan. This is for the upcoming fight, and in it there's. Uh, details, introductions, checklists, medical procedures, uh, ch detailed checklists to be filled out. Um, you know, so it's a, it's a detailed, comprehensive document backed up by also there's a medical evaluation and evacuation plan, um, a risk identification and management plan that's filled out, and finally, every boxer on our card has always they've had to read a, a letter, if you like, of obligations and responsibility going to the core of their own health and safety, and they've had to sign that letter before they're allowed to participate on the fight. Now, I challenge you to find another promoter in New Zealand that has anything near that level of comprehensive attention to health and safety. Um, so anyway, um, given the recent events though, we all, I think, in the boxing community um, were affected and, and uh, gave an even deeper thought. And, you know, I was personally affected by uh, Joseph Parker's brother, John Parker, was, was going to fight on, on the recent uh, card up in London there. And um, normally in New Zealand, he might have had no scan or maybe a, a CT scan. But under the British rules, he was required to get a full MRI. And that full MRI picked up some problems with his brain that otherwise would not have been picked up. Um, and, and, and so he didn't fight. And thank goodness for that, you know, we could have had another tragedy on our hands. So because of that, um, you know, we thought about it and, um, you know, MRI scans are, I'm, I'm not an expert, I'm, I'm told they're far more comprehensive than a CT scan. They're also far more expensive, but, uh, you know, given our role in Box New Zealand, I thought we had no choice, so we've made the decision that we're going to, from this day forward, compulsory MRI scan every person that ever boxes on a Duco card at our cost, just to make sure that we've ticked. Every, I think we've got many boxes ticked here, but we want to tick every box so that if ever there was another tragedy, we can hand on heart say that we, we've done all we can. I think while, whilst boxing is legal, you're going to have injuries and incidents like, like any other sport. I mean, we saw a tragedy in cycling the other day. Um, but, you know, whilst it's legal, you're going to have people who love boxing and they're going to box. But as a promoter, our role is to make sure that the environment is as safe as possible. And so I, I think we've done all we can. And, um, and I think hopefully it should give people like Junior Far here more comfort when they're stepping onto one of our cards. So 
Duke Junior, as Steve said, has just come back from Spa and Jonte Wilder, um, who's world champion and got a, a world title fight against uh, Tyson Fury this Saturday. We get, myself and Joseph Park and Kevin Barry are going to be there. Um, but it'll be fascinating to hear Junior's views about safety, but also perhaps that Wilder experience, given that uh, he, you know, he or Parker might be fighting Wilder in the future, and, and Junior here might be fighting Joseph Parker somewhere down the track. So that's enough from me for now, and I'll hand over to Junior. Um, is there anything I need to... Well, no, I, I think questions, we'll perhaps, yeah, we'll questions, questions for me or for Junior. Yeah. What's your experience, Junior, in, in terms of health and safety in leading up to other fights that you've been involved in that have gone to this sort of level that uh, David's planning? Um, uh, I did have like one instance where we did have to get like a lot of checks done, but that was um, that was while I was an amateur. That was when I was in the uh, WSB, um, and that was back in 2012. And basically, like ever since then, I haven't really like been like you know checked over so uh, thoroughly. Um, so I think it's a great thing that they're doing right here, like you know, because boxing is a very dangerous sport. You know, you. Um, we got two guys in the ring that can punch who have like trained to like you know take each other's heads off. So um, so I think precautions like this is a definite must um, for the sport that we are in. I guess on that when you when you heard about it, what was your initial reaction? Good, good um, because I did hear about the other um, tragic incidences that have um, happened through our sport. So yeah, um, so basically like you know once again I think it's a great thing. That yeah, um, putting safety first, um, and then, like you know, at the end of the day, we all want to fight, but then you know, we also want to go home to our families at the end of the day too. So yeah. In terms of where the sports at, obviously the, the tragic incident like that really brought that to light. I mean, in terms of this, was it sort of a step of pleased to see happen, and kind of an important step that had to happen after? <laughs> yeah, I felt like it had to happen. You know, because. Um, um, uh, uh, the heaven, though you probably don't see too much of it on the um, higher level, um, but it is something that we definitely do need to, like you know, look um, closely into, um, and it's a good thing that it is happening. Dave, what sort of cost are you looking at to implement MRIs for each fight? Well, look, I think um, I should acknowledge that some shows don't do any scanning, but that that's got to change. Um, CT scanning is the next step. That varies five, six hundred bucks a fight. I think the full MRI is up over a thousand. And then if you've got you know twenty guys on the card, it, it's an investment. But I think for the sport to be sustainable, it has to have um, credibility with the public. And if, if safety is not paramount, public credibility erodes, and then people are going to call for the sport to be banned. And so really, rather than complaining about it, I think the the people in the sport need to um, just get on board with making it as safe as possible and then boxing can continue into the future and grow.